By the end of this video, I will have read and reviewed this entire book. My plan is to just sit down and read whenever I gleam a nugget of truth, we'll talk about it. Whenever I learn something new that's worth discussing, I'll make a little video clip, and by the end of this entire book, we'll have our thoughts. I healed myself of ulcerative colitis and gout using this information, so I respect it, but some things just never cleared, like acne, fatigue. Right now I'm on a high fat diet against his wishes, and we'll see by the end of this video, can he convince me to return to the fruit land of life? Let's find out. Now I gotta be honest with you, it did not take me long to find some controversy. We're on page one, and I see a quote from Robert De Niro that was in his first book. Same thing, Anthony is a trusted source for our family. It's in the same, it's in this one. Okay, it's not in this one. It was in one of them. It's not here either. I may have overreacted on that one. That's on me. That's, that's my bad. We're off to a bad start, admittedly. One thing I don't love that he says, he says, your illness is not your fault. You weren't in control. And it takes a force greater than us, a helping hand from above, yeah, his source. Only he has it. I just, I see it as the opposite. You're the reason you're sick. You made the choice to eat fast food. Like I made myself sick. Sure, we're poisoned by certain industries. And it's not our fault <laughs> in that way, but you gotta take responsibility because then you're in power, not his spirit ghost. So we are, I don't like that he's not all into the law of attraction. That's the hippie way of life. Embrace it. He says high fat diets thicken the blood and prevent detox from happening and he could be right. I mean, when I go on a high fat diet, my skin clears up and I think sugar is causing acne, but according to his theory, I'm just stopping detox. How are we really to know the confusing world? I just figure the only way to test it is if I eat a high sugar food that isn't fruit or detoxing in any way. And then if the acne comes back, it is the sugar and I'm right, not the ghost. <laughs> it's funny, I'm on page 28. He just said air fresheners are one of the most toxic things. I agree. But he actually said that smoking is healthier than having an air freshener. Let that one sink in. I don't know about that, but they're both bad. I don't know that you want to really... He suggests you replace your air freshener with cigarettes and start smoking. It's better. <laughs> That's funny. Could be true, though. There's that vaping disease that the kids are getting because they smoke the CBD and it has vitamin E in it, a fat-soluble vitamin vaporized. That's what air fresheners are. It's fat-soluble, so... He might be right on that one. No debunking's happening today. Oh boy. He's saying how we're exposed to more pesticides from like people spraying lawns for mosquitoes. Nobody sprays a lawn for a mosquito. But from all the herbicide sprays and stuff, instead of like eating non-organic food, it's like that's the bigger worry, he's saying. And also radiation. He says our luggage accumulates radiation with every flight. So if you've flown like the same luggage with the same luggage for like 15 flights it's like just throw that shit out so i have a luggage i had to leave thailand every couple months that thing's radiating right now just read his chapter on the microbiome and he says basically not an issue at all like don't even focus on it and i have to agree i've never noticed a benefit from eating, like making my own sauerkraut or taking probiotics, other than sauerkraut is delicious and it's fun. But I never noticed like, oh, my digestion's so much better from fermented food. So I agree with him on that. And he said, probiotics can't kill bad bacteria. I like that. That's powerful. And I'm just getting into his intermittent fasting chapter. I've been fasting today and he says, you're not fasting until the sun rises twice. I kind of agree with that. 
you get the benefits from the longer ones. A 36 hour fast, I'm a huge fan of. That's what I'm doing now. This one is difficult. For some reason, I'm super hungry today. Help. <laughs> but the longer fasts are what finally start to heal. These shorter intermittent fasts, not super healing. So, so far, like I'm not in disagreement with anything he said. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'll find something. So he says that if you ever go more than two to three hours without food, you start running off adrenaline or epinephrine, and that acts as an amphetamine. And that's why people feel good on intermittent fasting. Could be true. And I just did a fast, a 36 hour one. I feel great. I feel fantastic. So I'm probably running on adrenaline. He says, if you have adrenal fatigue, obviously that's going to crush you. Eventually you keep fasting, you're going to burn out. But if you have the adrenal sufficiency, you're good to go. Just don't abuse it. Don't like do a seven day water fast every single week. So he's got a new list of no foods. They're in five levels now. So level one, the worst level, never even think of eating these foods. Eggs, dairy, gluten, soft drinks. Be mindful of salt consumption. So just never. Level two is all of the Level one plus pork, tuna, and corn. I just made a pork tuna corn sandwich. That's bullshit. Level three, everything plus industrial vegetable oils, soy, lamb. Why? Lamb of, it's in the Bible. Fish and seafood other than salmon, trout, and sardines. So those are the only three safe fish to eat. Level four is vinegar, fermented foods, caffeine, including chocolate. Last level, grains other than millet and oats. Those are the only grains you can eat. All oils. And then bonus, for even better, faster results, cut out salt and seasonings entirely, but pure spices are okay. Avoid any fat for a period of time and also remove alcohol, natural artificial flavors, nutritional yeast, citric acid, aspartame, other artificial sweeteners, MSG, formaldehyde, I love making that, preservatives. So basically, you're allowed to eat wood. That's it. Oh, no, wood's removed. No, oh God. You know what I don't get? All those levels of foods you should never eat, there's a bonus category that seems less important. And there's things like MSG, aspartame, and alcohol. Like these are just, oh, if you have time, avoid those. Those are like number one on my list. Aspartame? Are you kidding me right now? What the hell? To him, coconut oil is worse than aspartame and MSG. Don't add flax oil to your broccoli. That'll kill you at aspartame instead. His words. Fruit. I don't know if he's contradicting himself here, but earlier in the book, he said food combining is not the panacea that it's been taught to be. Like it's, it's not our answer, not important. And then here he's saying sugar and fat combined is what causes diabetes. So which is it? That's food combining. I debunked him. Take that. And he said, there's sugar in eggs. You can't carve up on an egg. You're a lie. One thing that makes me weary, he says eggs are just the number one food to avoid because scientists, they created viruses and bacteria in a lab and they used eggs to feed them. And now if you're sick, it's probably because of the viruses and bacteria and the eggs feed them and that's why you get worse. And he blames all illnesses on viruses and bacteria but how many stories have you heard of people especially vegans who just eat an egg and they feel so much better why would that happen I just wonder I ain't gonna I ain't trying them that's for damn sure I'm still on the fence of life when it comes to his information but why take the chance and eat eggs it's like I don't need them food for thought I gotta tell you, he is very anti-fat. Just forget fat if you want to live with this guy's advice. All oils, he says, thicken the blood. I thought flaxseed 
sends the blood. That's why they take it. Did I just debunk him? Take that. I'm finding a lot of his information seems to be very basic knowledge, but he puts a different spin on it. Like, everyone knows avoid gluten. Like, that's the main thing. Avoid it. But he'll say it's because gluten feeds viruses, whereas everybody else is just saying it's hard to digest. And it seems like everything is like that. He takes common knowledge and then just puts the viral spin on it. It feeds viruses. Mercury is bad because it feeds viruses. And he always has a convenient answer like, oh, science hasn't discovered this yet. So you can't prove him wrong because <laughs> science isn't there yet. But trust me, this is how it is. This guy debunks himself more often than he should. He says don't combine fat and sugar. That's like the main food combining rule. And then you look at his other books with the recipes, apricot bars, dates, almonds, coconut. Like every single recipe he has, I've always noticed this. Lots of his recipes, just pure fat. His sweet potatoes here have coconut oil and olive oil in the sauce. Baked potatoes with cashew sour cream, like all his recipes contradict his healing. So you get this mixed signal, like what are we supposed to follow here? People just looking at his recipes see all this delicious food with potatoes and cashew cream. It's like, what the hell? That's not healing? That's giving me diabetes? Why is it in your book then? So I'm reading his chapter on the 369 cleanse, which is his nine day liver cleanse. And I find it suspicious that he's upgraded it. If he gets all his information from a spirit who has all the answers figured out, why in the past two years has he upgraded to adding zucchini every day for the first three days? You have to do that. It doesn't make sense. I think he learned something about zucchinis. There is no spirit. Debunking continues, my friend. For those who don't know, he already had this cleanse, the 369 cleanse in his liver rescue book he wrote several years ago, and now it's upgraded. One thing I find a little strange, he says not to eat pork just because of its fat content. And I notice like every religion bans pork, pretty much everybody, almost everyone's in agreement except the carnivores. They say don't eat pork because it's unclean to you. They roll around in their own filth and there's so many reasons the big man upstairs has banned pork, but he won't go into any of that. And he's all into God, this guy. He's right there talking to the man right next door to God. <laughs> so why doesn't he mention any of this stuff? I don't know. Does it matter? I don't know. I'm just, I'm reaching. But I found an interesting little tidbit here about why he recommends these foods to avoid. And there's four categories, basically. You remove foods because either they're blood thickeners, so that's fatty foods, or they're dehydrators, salt, he listed others, I don't remember them. Toxin contributors. So they add toxicity to your body or they feed bugs. So thick, dehydrated blood feeding bacterial sex machines. You don't want any of that. We learned. I'm just reading his chapter on the mono diets. He allows you, there's a couple different mono diets, banana, and it's basically nothing but banana. You're allowed lemon juice in the morning and then celery juice, of course. And then one food, banana or papaya or banana and papaya, should you be so lucky. With optional lettuce here. That's on you. That's your option. Steamed potatoes. I've seen a lot of people do that one. Steamed peas, which was shocking. I can't imagine anybody doing steamed peas. Nothing but steamed peas. It'd be delicious. I want to do it. I'm going to do it. And the worst one of them all, steamed winter squash plus steamed green beans and Brussels sprouts. Those are good. Or asparagus. Also good. With optional lettuce. He says you can do these diets for up to two years. I just, I can't imagine eating nothing but bananas and lettuce for two years. The cravings. And he says no deficiencies. You, if anything, you become less deficient because you heal your gut. Nutrients are nothing. But it's interesting, he warns against doing like grapes because they're too astringent and acidic and they might hurt your gut. So interesting, I know a lot of people, there's a book called The Grape Cure, I've read it. And they say eat nothing but grapes. He says no. So he just debunked your ass. Good luck <laughs> recovering. He says red leaf lettuce is easier to digest than anyone knows. Just, nobody could believe 
how easy it is to digest once you chew it. It's a secret. It's a big mystery. I love it. Interesting that he says never add water to your smoothies. Like, we all know don't drink water with your food, but we kind of break that rule to make a smoothie because you need it to blend, but he's like, don't, no. <laughs> so if you're doing that, stop it. I was looking forward to his section on intermittent fasting, and I just read it. I'm underwhelmed, to say the least. He says intermittent fasting isn't beneficial. It's not good. It stresses the adrenals. But his alternative offered no real insight to a better plan. He didn't explain it. It's just lemon juice, celery juice, followed by another lemon juice. It's the same basic thing that he's always doing. And it's still, it's not giving you enough sugar, according to him, to keep the adrenals from not stressing. Like he gave no insight as to why this is even good. Like he, he bigged it up in the advertisements, like the intermittent fasting alternative that you, that they don't want you to know. <laughs> it's bullshit. That sucks. He's ragging on protein now because if you eat a mono diet, like he's suggesting, the obvious fear is where am I going to get my protein? So he's saying, I think I just saw him contradict himself. He says protein doesn't remove, no, he says protein doesn't stop viruses or bacteria. And yet in all his other books, he's saying take lysine, an amino acid, to kill the viruses, or at least deter them. So. He says protein doesn't, but lysine, a protein does. Debunked. Another weird thing he says about intermittent fasting, he says do his version because you don't want to be having the bulletproof coffee all day. And I'm thinking that's not intermittent fasting. How is that blending butter in your coffee fasting? Like I know there's some people that drink black coffee on a intermittent fast. I disagree with it. Why are you spiking your adrenaline on a fast? It's not healing. But I don't think he knows what intermittent fasting is because he thinks that you can have fat during that and don't do that, do this instead. But nobody's doing that and calling it a fast. You lied. He just said not to worry about lemon in your tooth enamel. I kind of agree with it. I think it's okay. But the fruit sugar, I always get terrible teeth. And his answer is, oh, that's from years ago. Teeth problems take years to develop. So when you go on a fruit-based diet, they start to hurt. That's because of your paleo diet two years before that. Like what a cop out. It's every time I go on the fruit-based diet, it hurts when I come off it and start eating tons of greens and fats, they feel better. So I think that's a lie. Just intuition wise, it's a lie. And he says, lemon doesn't strip your enamel, vinegar does, but doesn't explain why. They're both very acidic. I myself am not afraid of lemon, but I am afraid of fruit sugar in general. So the more fruit I eat, the more sensitive my teeth get. But lemons being so high in calcium. It could be. Call me crazy here, but there's not a lot of new information in this book. I feel like it's just repeated information that we've already heard, but he says it in a different way to sound unique. Like, you know how people say we're detoxing and then we're, we're craving like fast food because we used to eat it and like we're releasing it and we're craving it now. He says like the same thing, but it's because you produced adrenaline during that time and like you store it. He says the fatty food, it soaks up the adrenaline and that stress hormone becomes trapped in our fat cells. And so when you're detoxing, you release it and that's why you crave it. But it's the same information, just like everything he has. Don't eat gluten because it's GMO causing inflammation. But he's like, no, it's because it feeds the virus. <laughs> I got a new comforter. This video's taken like a month to make. I just sit down, read this. I don't want to read it. I'm so sick of it. It's almost done. We're getting there. A lot of recipes in that book. No fat. All right, here's where I draw the line. He doesn't believe in the law of attraction. He says you don't cause your illness with your mind or emotions. And I'm just thinking like, who does then? You're the one. You did it. You ate emotionally for so long, fast food, all that stuff. We're in control of everything. What is this whole thing? How do you not believe in that? The one law, the true law. How dare. He says it's not our fault. And the only way I agree there is that we've been lied to. There's a lot of industries just lying to us, confusing us. So in that sense, like, yeah, we fell for it. You got us. 
humans should be trustworthy, just sharing information, trying to find the truth, but we're not. So in that sense, yeah, it's not your fault that you were lied to by reptilians. But in every other sense, you have to develop your intuition to know the lie. So the last section here is listing pretty much every disease from A to C. A to C? Oh, there's more letters than that. A to Z, and it's telling you what causes the disease and which supplements to take for it. Something suspicious here. What's listed are the main causes. While multiple factors can contribute to a given health issue, and those factors can be different from person to person, you'll find only the leading causes fit here due to space. That's an interesting cop-out. So he's saying all of this could cause your disease, but it might be different for you and your friend for sure. I don't really know what actually cause, but they're all pretty much the same. It's just like it's a virus or a heavy metal or other toxin and the virus feeding off that toxin. Your virus, apparently viruses feed off air fresheners and then poo out a worse freshener. Still good smelling, but bad for you. And then that causes disease because your liver is clogged up with fat and fat is bad. That's basically it. Poisons, viruses eating the poisons and pooing in you. And then your liver can't handle it because you're on a high fat diet. Because you eat any fat. You had an avocado at Christmas. Forget your life. It's over. So to sum it up, even though I've abandoned the principles in this book, I feel like if you have a chronic disease, this is going to heal you. For the most part, you're going to get better on this. The major diseases, I just worry long term, something still ain't right, you're still pushing for it. That's where we run into, can you hear the construction? I just see so many people struggling with his diet year after year. Even though they healed a bunch of stuff, it's like to perfect their health, it never seems to reach them. And they always think they just got to cleanse more. It's always detox. Oh, I just got to push through this one last time. <laughs> but the good old days, it's like, is it ever going to happen? I don't know. I'm weary of it. I just see too many people failing on it. And then I failed on it. I just, I wasn't getting better. Although some things probably healed a bunch of stuff that I can't even tell. Like a bunch of heavy metals were released. And I was like, oh, I don't even know the good things that were happening. Probably, probably but I just wasn't feeling right. So if you're thinking of getting this book and going on the diet, I just have to say, you'll probably heal something at the expense of something else, like your teeth. Uh, every time, fruitarians, they just, they get the sensitive teeth, the sugar, the acids. It doesn't work well long-term, so be careful. If you've read his other books and you're thinking of getting this one, there's not a lot of new information in this which makes me feel like he's just continuing to write books for money and he's just coming up with new ideas. There were barely new ideas though. It's like the mono cleanse, like go read 30 bananas a day for him for that. Like we've known <laughs> people do the grape cleanse and the banana island and a bunch of bullshit watermelon cave. You'd die, you'd die in that cave. So whatever, I'm still on the fence. He could be right, but I feel better on the high fat. So I do that knowing that I could be clogging up the liver but he says high fat ages you, but all the people on high fat diets usually look pretty good for their age. So it's like opposite land always with this guy. So you let me know down below if I debunked anything in the book. I don't know that I did. It's a well laid out plan. It's just, it has some flaws. The teeth, you will lose them. At least some of them. Then you're a freaky ass scarecrow out in the field, smiling and then crows run away. They run, they don't even fly. They have to, they run fast, crows. Not a lot of people know that. So we learn nothing. It could be the best diet on earth. You have to push through the detox. Or it's just another raw vegan hippie shit diet by this guy. He, there's no spirit. I'm going to stop rambling now and leave. So thank you for watching the video. Let me know your thoughts down below. From what we discussed here today. Is he real? Is this good? Is it bad? Should you be forewarned against it? Thank you for watching, my friend, and thumbing up the video. I just summarized a book for you, potentially warning you against harmful health information, or showing you that this is the way to heal you, that both equally good 
things. I don't, I don't see why you'd thumb it down, but if you see a thumbs down down there, it's because they lost a race to a crow. Crows are fast. That's what we learned. You ever seen one run? No, you haven't. They don't show off. They fly, but when they run, that's a sight to behold. So We're done. Thank you for watching. Affiliate links down below for this book if you want to buy it. I say read any of his books. Same shit. This is probably the best one. It has all the different cleanses, the 369. Oh, I use magical numbers that the universe gave me. Hippie. <laughs> Alright, we're done. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.